As an interior designer, working with small spaces presents a unique challenge. But today, we're about to meet a woman who has tackled that challenge brilliantly and created an amazing tiny house. Hi Priscilla, how are hey, you? Nice to meet you, lovely for you to be here. It is lovely to be here and this is such a beautiful home you've created here. Thank you so much for saying that, I appreciate you coming. So first of all, can you talk to me a little bit about how this came to be? We bought this section and then when we were happily walking through the grass, we thought, oh, it would be quite lovely to do a little house where we can house our friends and family and also potential some guests in the future. And so that's why we decided to create a tiny and also a main house. And you actually lived here for a while as well while you were building your main house, weren't yes, you? Yes, that's right. So the plan was initially to live here first. Well, we saved some money to build that, but then the architect and the builder were saying that it's better to build them together. So the cost is a lot more reduced. Right. And so we really had to live here for about six to seven months before we could move into our main house. Right, fantastic. This is such a beautiful section that you've got here, but it couldn't have been an easy place to build because it's quite a steep section, isn't it? Yes, it was inspired initially to kind of have it at a higher ground but I thought that with the slope and you know the shape of the land it might be quite cool to also do something quite different and to look out into the native trees. Yeah the view here is lovely because you're sort of looking right out into the valley aren't you? Yes that's right yeah and, and I think that's the, the charm of this place really. Yeah so how much land do you have here? Uh, we have about 5,580 square meters. And in addition to the two homes on the land, you've also been able to find room for some animals, haven't you? Yep, we have two cats, two dogs and two alpacas. You've even got alpacas! <laughs> yep, they help to keep the grass down and um, it's an edible that I've always dreamed of having because, you know, it's the first time we have a space with a big section compared to obviously apartment living in Singapore, so this is huge for me. Yeah, and alpacas are just so cute! Yeah, and they're really easy to take care actually, so I've been quite relieved but I was also worried that they will die, but oh. thankfully they have been really well well, so we're all good. Okay, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really cool the way that you've sort of layered all of the different decks to create this amazing outdoor living space here as well. Initially, the deck was supposed to only be in this small area right outside the house, but because of the greenhouse and also I wanted a private entrance to the car park, so I thought it'd be quite cool to create sort of like a little fun, you know, stairs and decks to kind of make this a little bit bigger. Absolutely. I really like the greenhouse. That's such a nice addition. Uh, the greenhouse was actually not supposed to be there. Uh, I kind of built it because I really wanted to keep a round table that I have. And so I built that around that actually. But it's been quite a dream because uh, we can actually have friends over and we can sit there, um, not even in the day, but also at night when we have the string lights on. Oh, beautiful. It really is just such a nice addition. And it just adds so much to the outdoor living space where you can have an undercover area to enjoy a meal or relax and entertain friends. Yep, that's right. I think the charming thing people always thought is that a greenhouse is just for plants but then I kind of changed that notion to make it sort of a livable space as well. And behind the home I see you've got the shed there as well? Uh, yeah, the shed is our laundry room because the house is too small. I mean, I was only living here for six months, but we have a lot of stuff. So it was really used as an extra storage as well. And I think especially with laundry, if you can keep that outside of the home, it's really nice to do so. Yeah, definitely so. Yeah. It saves a lot of space. A lot of space and a lot of noise. Exactly. That's the perfect reason why it was outside. Yeah. But you can only do it on a, on a sunny day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and can you talk to me about the design of the house? I really wanted uh, lots of lights to come in. And so I have two French doors, one in the living and one in the bedroom. And then in the middle is kind of my favourite feature. It's a little bifold window and I thought it'd be like a fun cafe kind of feeling. And that's why I created sort of these little um, statement things to kind of frame the house. And I top off with a little scallop awning just to make it a bit more like a Parisian cafe. It definitely has that Parisian vibe, doesn't it? I really like that addition. And what size is the tiny house? Our tiny house is 24 square metres. And it was kind of the only size we could work with due to budget. But I thought I'll try to mix out every corner and, and make it as, as much as I can. The one thing I don't know if you realize, but I every time whenever I look at a tiny house is I notice a lot of small windows here and there, but I actually have lived in my rental house and I find that they collect a lot of dust and dirt. And yeah. so actually I prefer plain walls so I can actually decorate them. And that's something that I feel is important for me. Yeah, I completely agree. And I love the color scheme of this house. The black and white is just such a nice look. I think when it comes to uh, the color of the theme, I, I'm kind of safe 
person. So I thought white is really timeless. And I think that for something that's small, maybe going a lighter colour can kind of create the illusion that it's bigger. And that's why I went for it. And you, of course, are no stranger to good design because you actually work as an interior designer, don't you? Um, yes, it's kind of like uh, my own thing. I mean, I come from Singapore actually, and we are very used to apartment livings, small apartments really, but uh, this is the really first time that I've created such a, the tiniest home I've ever did. <laughs> so <laughs> it's quite a challenge, but it's also a real fulfillment. Well, you have done such a fantastic job with the exterior of this home, and I am so excited to see what you've done on the inside. Can we take a look? Sure, come on in. Thank you very much. This is absolutely charming what a gorgeous home you've created here oh, thank you so much yeah like this was really a dream to create walking in immediately this just feels like a space which is good to be inside oh thank you that's a really kind thing to say and immediately upon entering the home we are in your living room yes it was actually not supposed to be the living room but it was designed it was meant to be the bedroom um so when we first designed it this being the bedroom was a big no-no for feng shui and so my feng shui master said that uh, it's better when you first walk into the main door it is where sort of the common area is rather than your private sleeping quarters that makes a lot of sense but you have created this as a guest bedroom, haven't you? That's right. It's really just for extra sleeping purposes. So this little um, sort of sofa zone can actually be pulled out and you can actually, you know, kind of sleep someone with a double bed arrangement. Very nice. And what a nice space just to be able to sit back, relax, and also take in that wonderful view. Yeah, because the space is so small. So I didn't want to do like a bulky standard kind of sofa bed or um, sofa. So I did one which is more like an L shape to really maximize the corner. And so this place is really nice to sit and relax and to really look out in the view. And one of the things that immediately strikes me walking into this home is the wonderful colour combinations. The sort of neutral tones in here really work for the space. Yeah, I think I didn't really want to go overboard with the colours, but I wanted to introduce in some of these fun things that I have sourced. So I have things that we found in Mexico, in India, in Japan, and also some prints from New Zealand artists that I really wanted to bring into this space. My favourite is actually this little art that I got from a Singapore art gallery. Um, it's actually a Switzerland artist and she used sort of like a screen and lighting kind of effect to create sort of like a nice wall light and I thought it just makes it more unique rather than a typical wall light you can get in the lighting store. Absolutely it makes for a lovely feature there and behind you we've got your bathroom. Yes that's right this is one of the smallest bathroom I've ever done. Let's take a look. Hey this is really cool. I love the tiles that you've chosen in here. It's almost like walking into a forest. Yeah, I really wanted to bring the outdoors in and because it's such a small space, I think like darker tiles would make it feel more impactful and cozier. Especially with a smaller bathroom as well. It's also a great way of adding a lot of interest to the space. Yeah, you save a lot on tiles, I guess. And also at the same time, because it's small, I think when you do up all the walls from the floor to the ceiling, it just makes it look bigger. Yeah, I completely agree. It's a great size shower that you've got in here? Yeah, it's about 800. Um, definitely not the biggest, but it's spacious enough. So it's quite cool for us to have this little space. So we did a little glass sliding door just so that there's a separation between the wet and the dry. Flushing toilet in here as well? Yeah, our section has a septic tank. It helps support not only the tiny house, but also our main home. And a nice vanity here as well. Um, yeah, I really want it, again, because it's so tiny, to do sort of more of an open concept a look. And so that's why I went with sort of just two wooden shelves. And so then I can kind of put a basket for toiletries and the other one just for a small basin. And it's so tiny, that's why we have to put the sink and the tap on a corner. <laughs> Fair enough too, but it works great. The brass tap wears a really nice touch as well. Yeah, I love this little brass detail. It's a really fun way to kind of brighten up the space because everything is darker. Absolutely, it's a lovely contrast. And next door we've got your kitchen. Can we take a look at that? Sure, come on over. Thank you very much. This looks like a very compact but very full featured kitchen you've got here. Yep, I've got a sink, a stove and a hood, fridge and also microwave that's hidden. Everything you need. And plenty of prep area here as well. Yeah, so not only do I have about 2.4 meters of prep space, I decided to do sort of like a flip up table just in case I need to kind of have more space to put stuff when I need to prepare food. What a clever idea and a lovely spot to sit, enjoy your meal and look out onto that view as well. Yep, so this is kind of like the indoor uh, dining space as well. So it kind of doubles up in two functions. I really like the tiles in here as well. It adds a nice pop of color. 
I, it's very funny actually when the guy was doing it and then I was kind of sharing this with my friends they said Pris you know it doesn't match and so the cool thing about it is I really do not like it matching because when it's done too matchy in terms of towels then it looked too retro and so I did it uh, purposefully like you know a bit more irregular so it just feels like a random pattern. Yeah and I think it works brilliantly. I really like the way that you've used so much open storage here as well because it's nice to kind of show off some of the ingredients in the kitchen. Yeah and because it's such a small kitchen I have have definitely created a zone which is kind of one side being open and the other side being closed and I thought the open one is a great way to kind of showcase the food and you know label them quite pretty and it also it's much easier to take. And you've got the cupboards there when you need to hide stuff away. Yes it's so important. Absolutely. And it's a very spacious bedroom you've created here as well. Yep, we have three pets and two of us, so we make sure that this is a bigger space for all of us to live in. And again, it's nice the way that your bed just looks out onto that view, and really the whole house is just wonderfully connected to the outdoors, isn't it? Yeah, I think that was really the idea because it's so small, so we really wanted to have as many natural light coming in as possible. But obviously in winter, it gets a bit more cold because of the direction of the house. But over in spring and summer, the light is really beautiful when it's streaming to the site as well. Yeah, beautiful. In tiny house, because we have so many uh, windows, we decided to use automated blinds just so that when we want to sleep, we can just press it rather than have to screw it down. And we thought that curtains would look a little bit too much. So going with the automated blinds was really a, the best solution. Yeah, that's a really nice way of doing it. I like that you've got the open wardrobe here as well. It just looks really nice. But you do have to be very careful with your clothing selection, don't you, to keep it looking good. <laughs> Yes, I think um, that's why one of the key things is to make sure you have matching hangers. I think uh, that's really a rule, right? If you have really weird coloured hangers, then it will look even messier. Other than the open concept wardrobe, we also have a storage bait where we can hide other things that are bulkier or even we wish to be out of sight. Very clever. And you've got the desk here as well. Yeah, so this little fun thing here was actually a mix of different things I found from like Bunnings. So I combined a wardrobe, a dresser that I removed the bottom legs to create sort of like a little table and I just added in some brackets in there um, because I really wanted a space where I can kind of do my work and have also a view of the native trees that I have out there. Yeah, what a lovely addition. So you lived here for six months while your home was being built. What was the experience of living here like? I actually really love it because I think it really helps you to kind of stop shopping. <laughs> and it makes you really focus on what you have and then you remove um, sort of what you you don't have so every time I have a shopping policy where if one goes then I can replace the other one and so I think it helps me to really cut my shopping habits. Fair enough too and now that you have moved into the main house what an amazing place you've created for your guests. Yeah I think whoever has stayed here really loved the view and even just that little fun thing where they have an extra outdoor space to live in so I think it's been quite a dream to be able to create this from scratch. In this tiny house I've had my grandparents stay here, my father, my mother, my aunt and so just in March they came by and then like the main house was totally full and that we had to spill people here about four of us were living in this tiny house too. That's just so cool because especially when you do move overseas being able to have a really welcoming comfortable space for your family to come and stay is just so important isn't it? Yeah, it is. And sometimes if like the house is too busy, I also come here to do my work. It's like a little nice retreat. I think living in a smaller space has taught me that if it's designed well and it kind of fits all your functions, it's still a beautiful home. And it's really the people inside the house that really matters. It's not so much the size of it. And my husband and I, when we first bought this uh, land, we really thought it was so crazy to build something from scratch. And here we are. It's also the first home that we stayed in that was kind of ours. So it, it's really special to me. We are really proud and um, really blessed by, by this place. And can we talk about the cost that was involved in building this project? So it was about 150 and um, it was not a cheap amount because we added in like the deck to extend into a bigger outdoor space. But I think it's worth it because it's really huge and beautiful. I completely agree. This is a great result for that money. And with your home and the tiny house now complete, what does the future hold for you now? Um, I think it's maintaining it. <laughs> the reality is that uh, I'm really new to New Zealand, so I'm hoping to see what are some things I can do to kind of upkeep it. But I'm really hoping to one day maybe add in a little hot tub or maybe a little nice shelter just so that the outdoor experience can be even better. I completely agree. You've got to have a hot tub. Yeah, um, well, I'm saving up for it. Well, Priscilla, I just think this is such a beautiful and welcoming space you've created here. It was a wonderful home for you and I love that it is now a fantastic place for your guests to enjoy. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thank you so much for coming. Great to be here. 
This is such a beautiful home. Priscilla's skill as an interior designer has completely come alive in this house. But what I love most of all is watching her face completely light up when she talks about this home. That's when you know you've created something very special.